Oil is one of the few commodities where you can say that it really does make the world go round. Obviously, the most well-known use is in gasoline for your car, but just about anything that you use that has plastic in it is at least partially made of oil. Other products on that list are many types of clothing, lipstick, and even chewing gum. Whenever oil comes into a conversation, one of the first things that come up after that are the numerous oil spills that have happened over oil's relatively recent history. There are the obvious ones that are common talking points, such as the Exxon Valdez oil spill when an oil tanker hit a reef in Alaska in March of 1989, dumping over a quarter of a million barrels into the Prince William Sound. Or the Deepwater Horizon oil spill, which occurred in April of 2010 after an explosion on an oil rig released almost 5 million barrels of oil into the Gulf of Mexico. However, there is one oil spill which is believed to be coming worse than the Deepwater Horizon incident going on right now that you may not have heard of. And if you have heard of it, well, you may not have heard the full story. The oil rig in question was located at the Taylor Energy Mississippi Canyon 20 site by Taylor Energy, a New Orleans-based oil company founded by Patrick F. Taylor in 1979. Constructed in 1984, it was built 11 miles south of the Plaque Mines Belize Delta over top 28 oil reservoirs reaching up to 2 miles deep. September 16th of 2004, Hurricane Ivan struck the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean hard, resulting in the deaths of around 120 individuals and resulting in damage estimated in 2004 at $26.1 billion. One of the many things damaged was Taylor's oil rig at the Mississippi Canyon 20 site. Even though it was a full 62 miles from the site, it still caused submarine landslides which resulted in 25 of the 28 oil wells to begin leaking below the surface. Not long after the hurricane struck, on November 6th of 2004, Taylor Energy's founder, Patrick F. Taylor, died of complications with a heart disease. His wife, Phyllis Taylor, took over the company and became, at the time, Louisiana's richest woman. Fast forward to 2008, and the oil has already been leaking into the ocean steadily for four years. The Coast Guard had been informed by Taylor Energy at this point, but the public still doesn't know about this oil spill. Nine of the 25 leaking wells were said to be plugged, and Taylor Energy officially ceased drilling operations. They do still exist as a company with one full-time employee as of 2015, but, as their website says, it is solely to respond to the oil spill, known as the MC-20 incident. It would be another two years before the Taylor oil spill would become public knowledge, because of a much larger oil spill being managed, the BP Deepwater Horizon oil spill. While monitoring the oil from the BP spill, some of the researchers became aware of a continuing leakage out of the Taylor Energy site. After this, word began to spread to the general public. On March 5th of 2013, the Lower Mississippi Riverkeeper Organization, in collaboration with others, filed a Freedom of Information Act lawsuit against the Coast Guard over them not fulfilling requests for public records about the Taylor Energy oil spill. Then, in 2015, the Associated Press released an article that disputed Taylor Energy's claims that the leak was going down. Official statements by Taylor Energy was that the leak was at 4 gallons of oil per day. The article, however, claimed that the amount spilled so far was somewhere between 7,000 and 33,000 barrels, or 300,000 and 1.4 million gallons of oil, which would require much more than 4 gallons per day leaking. Needless to say, the evidence was not adding up. Finally, on September of 2018, NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, released a study that said the oil leak wasn't 4 gallons per day, but somewhere between 9 and 108 barrels per day, or somewhere between 400 and 4,500 gallons per day, meaning that the oil spill was anywhere from 100 to 1,000 times worse than Taylor Energy had been saying. Taylor Energy claimed that the oil being released was from the oil that was locked in sediment, and that they couldn't do anything about this oil. But NOAA's report said that the amount of oil being released was simply not possible if it were only being held in sediment, and not an active leak. Ultimately, this report led to an administrative order on October 23rd by the federal government, demanding that Taylor Energy plug up this leak immediately, a full 14 years after the leak originally started, and 10 years after the leak was discovered. 
Taylor Energy also faces fines of up to $40,000 per day if it fails to comply. Government sources also released a new estimate at around this time, saying that the oil spill was even worse than the report by NOAA had claimed. The new claim, made by geoscientist Oscar Pineda Garcia and presented by government lawyers, is that the oil spill is anywhere from 250 to 700 barrels per day or around 10,000 to 29,000 gallons per day. They also estimate that anywhere from 1.5 to 3.5 million barrels of oil have already spilled out into the Gulf over the 14 year period, making it ready to surpass the Deepwater Horizon oil spill in total volume. Now I'm not trying to say that both of these situations are exactly the same, because they clearly aren't. The Deepwater Horizon oil spill was over a much shorter period of time, whereas the Taylor Energy oil spill has been going on over a period of about 15 years. But that does not take away from the disastrous consequences of the Taylor Energy oil spill itself. Taylor Energy filed a lawsuit against the government on December 20th, 2018 in an attempt to get the October 23rd administrative order thrown out and have $432 million held in the 2008 government trust fund created for the oil spill given back to Taylor Energy. They claimed the government broke an agreement made previously about the amount of oil spilled and said, quote, Recent erratic behavior from the Coast Guard indicates that the federal government is suddenly more concerned about headlines in Washington than the Gulf ecosystem and the shoreline in Louisiana. However, in April of 2019, Judge Nancy Firestone of the U.S. Court of Federal Claims dismissed Taylor's demand. They responded, saying, quote, Taylor Energy is disappointed with the court's ruling. However, by no means is this question resolved. We are reviewing the ruling and will consider all options going forward. Taylor Energy is continuing the fight with the government in a separate lawsuit they filed where they claim the government's containment is doing more harm than good. Starting in February of 2019, the Coast Guard began working on and deploying containment measures. Ran through a contractor known as Covillian Group, their device is said to be able to contain as much as 30 barrels per day or about 1300 gallons. This is still a far cry from NOAA's upper estimate of 108 barrels per day of leakage, or even the minimum from the newest estimate. But finally, 15 years after the leak started, some real progress is being made in containing the oil spill. There is still a lot of work to be done, not just to stop this oil spill, but to prevent similar disasters in the future. What's important is that we, as members of this global community, never shut our eyes or ears to the world around us. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe to see more. Ring the bell next to it so you get updated whenever I make an upload, and you can stay updated on whatever I'm doing by following my Twitter. Links to everything are in the description. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Historical Hindsight, and I'll be seeing you soon.